For the last 30 years, five Mississippi governors, Republicans and Democrats alike, have signed a proclamation recognizing the statutory state holiday and identifying April as Confederate Heritage Month. But this is a choice every time it happens. What's your reaction to this proclamation? Well, first, I didn't do it when I was governor. And second, Confederate heritage, really, the heritage that I think of in the Confederacy is uh, slavery, uh, is treason, and is losing. So which one of those heritages are we really honoring here. You know it's bad when a former Mississippi governor says the state has gone a bit too far. This whole story is absurd. We're talking about Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves who named April Confederate Heritage Month. Just keep it flying. Keep it flying? And, and why do you want to keep it flying? Why do you want to, why would anybody want to erase our heritage? Well, some people would say that that flag symbolizes uh, racism, it symbolizes slavery, um, and they might have some valid points there. Uh, that's their opinion, you know, they're welcome to their opinion if they want it. Are you, are you pro-slavery or against slavery? I have no comment, but thank you for the interview. And Reeves has a long history of racism, which includes being in a fraternity in college that used blackface. At the core of this story, there's something very interesting about the presidential election and how it might go. And it's not really visible from the surface, so we'll get there in a second. The fact that this is happening, that Republicans are doing this, they're celebrating Confederate heritage in 2024, I guess none of it's really surprising when the media is spewing garbage like this. Thanks. Well, as an African-American, we don't do this. It's not something we no, do. one percenter. It, it's, it's, if you notice, this is a white thing. Yeah. Uh, African-Americans, myself included, oh. we, we don't go into the wild like that. Just grab wild animals for, I mean, it's just stupid. We don't investigate. No, I it's was white people, scary. it's a white thing. Or how about the former president and current GOP frontrunner's son? Took the exact same student and you took away, uh, you know, skin color, sexual orientation, you know, trans, you know, gender, you know, status, whatever the heck that may be. Uh, if you took that away and you compared the scores of Asians and or whites relative to any of the other sort of, let's call them, you know, checkbox, uh, you know, woke uh, status symbols today of the radical left, and you put them head to head, uh, it, it's shocking uh, who is able to get into Harvard and who would be unilaterally deterred or just rejected entirely. He thinks they only get in there because of diversity questions on applications. There are plenty of brilliant black Americans in this country that go to schools like Harvard or elsewhere who didn't get in there simply because of their race. They got in there on merit, which is something that he doesn't understand because he got into school because of his dad. Every interview he does is further proof he did not get into a school like Penn on on merit. And of course, racism is a learned behavior. We know that. So it's not surprising that the apple hasn't fallen too far from the tree. We had a case where we had an African-American guy who was a fan of mine. Great fan. Great guy. In fact, I want to find out what's going on with him. You know what I'm... Oh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Trump did more for the black community than any president in the last few decades. But sure, he's racist too. This is the line that he keeps using despite evidence showing that isn't true. And there are long lasting effects that will continue to harm black Americans in this country because of who he appointed to the Supreme Court. The entirety of Trump's efforts in reaching out to the black community and bettering their lives can be reduced to hollow symbolic gestures like tapping Ben Carson to run housing and urban development. He's a surgeon, that doesn't make sense. Oh, but urban is in the title. We'll give it to him because he's black. There's some ridiculous tokenism in that, of course, but any rational person knows that Trump didn't actually care about the black community in this country. Inviting Kanye West to the Oval Office is not outreach to the black community. It's a publicity stunt for an egomaniac to egomaniacs. And it really doesn't matter how much Trump and his allies say they have the support of black voters. Reality is always there to shut them down. But I think there's an interesting electoral marker to consider when you think about black men. In 2023 in Ohio, um, where the reproductive health was on the ballot, reproductive access for women was on the ballot, the group that voted in the highest percentage for protecting a woman's right to have reproductive health or access to abortion was actually black men by eight points. They voted 88% to protect a woman's right to have an abortion, outvoting white women, outvoting 
black women outvoting every other subgroup. This was really surprising. I can't believe this is the first time I heard this. That is not the group I think most people expect to show up to vote for abortion rights, especially in a state like Ohio. But that's encouraging. I think his point about black voters voting on issues is real. They can certainly express frustration with candidates like Joe Biden and like Donald Trump, but they're motivated by issue because the way this country has been built and how the government has operated for centuries never centers them. So they don't have this strong party affinity, like say a comfortable, affluent white person in this country would. There are some, of course, that are proud to be Democrats and maybe some that are proud to be Republicans. But when you have groups of people in this country that society routinely overlooks or mistreats or disrespects, their civic engagement is going to look a lot different than someone whose life has been entirely comfortable. For them, voting isn't an expression of political identity, it's a strategic decision. And in this case, why would they want to see their friends, their family, their loved ones lose their ability to exercise their reproductive rights? It's like so much of this. It's all smoke and mirrors for Trump's team. They can say a lot, but so much of it is bullshit. Simply saying on a podcast, which was apparently hosted by a QAnon guy, that black men idolize you doesn't make it true. Again, need to see literally any evidence at all that this has happened more than once. And that person was of sound mind. But what they're trying to do is chip away at a coalition. A coalition that Democrats have relied on for several elections. And while that coalition may be in fragile state because Biden isn't doing the best job, abortion could upend that for Republicans. Because they're now realizing they have gone way too far on this issue. You've heard it before, but it is the dog that caught the car. They overturned Roe and now they don't know what to do. It was a galvanizing force for Republicans for decades. Now people are realizing how miserable it is and they're trying to backpedal. So this isn't the only reason why they're trying to appeal to black voters, but it is a big reason. And thankfully the data shows they might not be successful.